Hello, and welcome to the What's New video for Compress 2015 Build 7500. We have an exciting build for you this year, and I want to touch on some of the key features that are going to be available to you. The features that I'd like to cover today will include the Appendix 14 heads, the solid model export of our heat exchangers, welded cover joint details, new report styling, and the cloud version for Compress. The first option that I'd like to show are the Appendix 14 heads. New to Compress 7500, under the Component menu, users now can select the Appendix 14 flathead right here. Now I've gone ahead and put one on this model, so we're going to open that one up. So what I'll do is I'll just hover over the flathead, and I'll right-click on it, and open up the flathead. Now the first screen is very similar to all the other component dialogs where we'll select our material, enter in our design conditions, select material options, things like that. So I'll go ahead and click next. And then we'll come to the second screen. So on this screen we're going to specify the head sketch type, the nozzle inputs, items like that. But let's start in the top left here under the head sketch type. As you can see what we would do is select this from UG34 and we can select the appropriate sketch. From here, we just enter in our dimensions for the head, and then we can choose if we'd like to have a centrally located nozzle on this head or just have it open. If you do choose to have a nozzle, we can then specify the nozzle dimensions here as well. Once we click OK, the Appendix 14 head will be modeled for us. Now one other thing to note here is that we can also add additional nozzles to the outer rim of this head as well. So what we would do is we would go up here to our nozzle menu, select a detail design, and we could simply start placing nozzles around the periphery here as well. The next feature that I'd like to show you is our solid model export of our heat exchangers. So what we're looking at is the heat exchanger in front of us. Now before we can export, I want to go through a couple of new inputs we have for the heat exchanger, and this is more so for the fabricators in mind. So what I'm going to do is right click on my heat exchanger and we're going to open up the tube sheet. So here's the input wizard. So the first thing that we would want to do is we want to sync the tube layout program with the tube sheet. So what I'm going to do in the general options page here is I'm going to click on the tube layout button. This is then going to open up our tube layout and we can come in here, we can add tubes, we can remove them, we can add our tie rods, seal bars, things like that. But I want to make sure that this checkbox here, Synchronize TLP, that stands for Tube Layout Program, with Heat Exchanger Wizard is checked. So when I click Close, now everything is synced up. But a couple other inputs we have here, I simply come across here to the Tube Sheets page. One thing that we're going to see is a tube hole diameter, and this is for our clearances. So what we do is we have a couple options. We have a standard fit, these are taken from Tima, and we have a special closed fit, as well as a custom fit. So if I stick a standard fit, we'll pick up on the tube OD and adjust this accordingly for you. Likewise, we'll also do this to the baffles. So if I click on the tubes and shell page, we can select a tube hole diameter for our baffles. So this might actually be different than our tube hole for the tube sheet, so we might want to make these a bit bigger per Tima, or again, put a custom size in there. So these are going to be some new inputs for us in 7500. So then I'm going to click OK and that's going to sync up. Now for the exporting of our solid models what we do is we simply click on this 3D button right here and as you can see this is our solid model. Now again you can actually do all your modeling in this view or you can choose the classic compress view. It's really up to the user um, how they want to model it. Now for the exporting, all we're going to do is click on this 3D button with the arrow underneath it, like so. And then from here, we're going to choose the destination folder, and we're going to export the XML 3D file. Now that's just one file type. Now this file type is key because this is the one that we load in for our codeware interface. Now I'm going to do a separate video showing you how we're going to bring these into SolidWorks and Inventor afterwards as well. But let's say that we want to send it out to a plan layout program or just send out a basic geometry file. Well, we have different file types that you can send out as well. So you can send out ACES files, granite files, IGES, or even step files. Probably the most common ones we see sent out are step files. 
other than the XML 3D file, which again is used with our codeware interface. So I'll select this file type and I'll click save. And then Compress will prompt me saying that the model has been exported successfully and I can click OK. So let's have a quick look at these models in both SolidWorks and Inventor. So I've already gone ahead and exported these models. So here's the heat exchanger imported into SolidWorks. As you can see, it's a full working model. All the parts have been renamed on the side here, and all the ASME properties have been applied to this heat exchanger. And likewise, we can do the same in Autodesk Inventor as well. With Build 7500, the joint details from UW13 can now be specified for welded covers and Appendix 14 heads. I'm going to rotate this vessel around. We're going to open up the welded cover on the back here. I'm going to click Next on the first screen. And on the second screen, you'll now see the head corner joint details available. So depending on what head sketch type you select here from the list, the UW13 sketch details will become available. So I have a UG34 sketch H selected, and I want to change the head corner joint from a sketch F to, let's say, a sketch D. And I can, as you can see, our joint details will change here. So all I would need to do is specify our edge distance and our weld bevel depth here, and then click OK. So I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that we've now updated the reporting in Compress. So let's go ahead and run the code calculations. So as always, we'll go up here to the Action menu, and we'll select Perform Code Calculations right here. So this is the PDF report that Compress has generated, but let's switch this over to an HTML report. So we'll click on the HTML icon right here, and we come to the HTML report. So if I scroll down, Let's take a cylinder report. What you'll notice here now is a lot of the information before was listed in order, but we've tabulated here, so it's a little bit easier for our users to go through and find information about the report. So as you scroll through it, as you can see, everything's tabulated. It's color-coded a little bit to make it a bit easier to read through other reports. Now these colors can also be customized, so if you want to have, let's say, a lighter color, what we can do is actually come up to the report menu right here and select report defaults. So this is also what we'll go if we want to set up minimal reports as well. But in this dialog you'll notice that we have an option for a dark color scheme as well as a light color scheme. So you can select that, rerun the report, and you'll have a lighter color scheme available to you as well. Or you can just turn off the colored headings for the report if you don't want any colors in the report at all. And as always, if we want to switch back to our model, what we'll do is we'll just click on the report icon that we're using. So we're using the HTML report. So I'll simply click on the HTML icon, and we switch back to our model like so. Finally, I'd like to touch on the cloud version now offered by Codeware. Users can now come to the Codeware.com website, and in the top right-hand corner, click the Login button. This will take us to our client login center, and we can click on the Codeware Cloud button right here. From here, we simply come into our login screen, and enter in our login credentials, and click Log On. Once we log on, we can simply click on the Compress 2015 Build 7500 icon, and Compress will be launched in the cloud. Now a key feature about this is that Compress can now be accessed from any device. So if you're using a tablet, a laptop on the go, any device like that, we can launch Compress for you. And on top of this, there's also cloud storage as well, so we can back up files to our cloud and access them at a later point. Now Compress has been launched, just pull it over here, and this is the cloud version of Compress 2015 Build 7500. So the interface is identical to the standalone version, 
we can model individual components or we can open existing components or vessels, things like that. I'd like to thank you for watching this quick video on Compress. If you have any questions or would like to see a demonstration, please email sales at codeword.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670.